How good is your soil? Have you ever wondered whether it's good enough to grow plants? When you go to the garden center and you buy some compost, is that good compost? And how can you tell? In this video, I'm going to show you a very simple test to evaluate your soil, your manure, your compost, any kind of media for growing plants. You can also use this test to determine how much fertilizer you should be using. So I know my soil is fairly good for growing plants because almost everything in my garden grows with my native soil. I don't fertilize anything, so I know it's fairly good. But how good is fairly good? I also from time to time buy bags of compost and I add that mostly to pots when I'm potting up seedlings. But for some plants I also add it into the planting hole. You know those plants like clematis that like really rich soil. But I don't actually know how good that compost is. I mean, you pick up a bag, you bring it home, and it kind of looks black. That doesn't really tell you very much. Last year, I also got an order of horse manure, and I thought I'd add it to my vegetable garden to add some more nutrients to that garden. But when I got the horse manure, it seemed like there was very little manure and a whole lot of sawdust. My concern was that that manure, in fact, was not going to provide much nitrogen for my garden. In fact, all that sawdust is not good in the soil because as the microbes decompose the sawdust, they actually draw nitrogen out of the soil, away from your plants, to help them digest the sawdust. So I thought I'd run a little experiment to see how good various types of soil are. And you can do this at home very easily, and it's a good way to see how good your soil is. Take any size pot, but a larger one like this works a little better. Fill it with your soil. You want to get at least two samples of soil so you can do a comparison. So in this case, I have this one for my compost, this one for my newer and sawdust, and this one for my native soil. Then I planted four bean seeds in each one of these. Now I did this in later spring and it was already warm enough for beans to germinate. If you want to do this earlier in the year or in fall, use peas because they don't mind being in the cold. Water the pots, let the beans germinate and see how they grow. You want to compare their growth in each of these medias. These have been growing for quite a while and I can tell that my compost has the most yellow leaves. My soil is much greener here. This tells me that my soil actually has more nitrogen available to it than the compost, which is the exact opposite of what I expected. I was concerned that the compost might be too rich in nitrogen and burn the plants, but in fact that didn't happen. The middle one here is horse manure. If you put seeds in the horse manure and it's too fresh, the excess nitrogen will burn the seedlings and they just won't grow. As you can see, these had no problems growing, even though it was fairly fresh manure. And the leaves are quite yellow. I don't have a lot of nitrogen here. In fact, I have more nitrogen in my soil. That's not entirely surprising, because one of the advantages of soil is that it has a lot of places for nitrogen to stick on. So when you're doing this comparison, also have a look at how fast it's growing and the size of the leaves. A good soil that has lots of nutrients will produce larger leaves and the plant will grow faster. In this case, they're all growing about the same speed. This one may be a bit taller, but it doesn't really have more leaves than the others. In my experiment, the three of them look pretty much equal. It was a real surprise to me because I'm buying these two products to make my soil better. And in fact, they're not doing anything for my soil. My soil has just as many nutrients and grows the plants just as well as these other things. Now my soil is a fairly heavy clay, so these things will lighten the clay, but they're really not adding much in the way of nutrition. The other use of this test is to test for pesticides. If you get manure or even compost and it's been contaminated with herbicides, then your seedlings will die in here. Since the seedlings grew well, I know there was no herbicide in either the compost or the manure that I got. Now one thing to keep in mind with this test, because these seeds are in pots, they get watered quite a bit more than they would if I plant them in the ground. And by watering them more, the water runs through the pot and it also takes a lot of the nitrogen out of the pot. So in all three cases, these beans would grow better and be a little greener if they're sitting in the ground. 
You can also use this test to determine how much fertilizer you should be using. Let's say that you have raised beds and you've made an artificial mix in there with peat moss and compost, and you're wondering, how much fertilizer do I need to add? And how much is too much so I don't burn my plants? Take the soil you want to test and put it in all three pots. Add the bean seeds. The first pot, you add no fertilizer. In the second pot, you add a little bit of fertilizer. In the third pot, you add more fertilizer. Now grow them and see how they do. Which one of these did the best? You might find that the third one, the one with the higher fertilizer level, actually ended up browning the leaves. You might see salt damage on them. That would indicate that this is too much fertilizer. This one might be better than this one, so you know a little bit of fertilizer for your soil is a good thing. Or you might find that they all grow the same, which tells you you don't have to add fertilizer. Adding that excess nutrients isn't needed because you have really good soil to start with. So this can be a very useful task to learn a lot about the soil in your garden. Soil is critical for plant growth and it's really important that gardeners understand their soil. If you want to know more about the soil in your garden, have a look at my book, Soil Science for Gardener. It'll tell you everything you need to know about soil and improving it for your plants. If you're interested in that, click on the link of the book. If you'd like to learn more about soil tests that you can do in your own garden, click on the link in the top right hand corner. Happy gardening!